Good evening, everybody. Um, you're very welcome to our fourth webinar. Um, I'm Sinead, I work with Limerick City and County Council, and this is, as I said, our fourth webinar in our Tidy Town series. We're thrilled to have uh, Mr. John Carney with us this evening. As you will know, John is the higher executive officer in the Tidy Towns unit, um, which is part of the Department of Rural and Community Development. This evening you will be getting very valuable insights into this year's National Tidy Towns competition and after John's presentation there will be a Q&A session. Please type your questions and answers into the, the box and address them to everybody so that everybody can see them because many people may have the same questions and this will help avoid duplicates. Um, please don't use the chat for chat box for questions. Um, to keep that, also keep in mind that recordings of this webinar and our other webinars will be on the YouTube channel. Um, that is on a link in the chat at the minute. So if you have a look at that there, okay, John, you're most welcome. I'll hand over to you now. Thanks very much, Sinead. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, and thanks for the uh, opportunity to present Tidy Towns groups this evening on uh, the 2021 competition. Um, as Sinead said, my name is John Kearney. I'm the manager of the Tidy Towns unit based with the Department of Rural and Community Development who administer the competition and we're based in Ballina in Mayo. So I have a number of slides here. I'm just going to go down through them. And as Sinead said, any questions, please feel free to put them into the facility there and we'll look at them afterwards. So in order to prepare for this year's competition, uh, there are, are three things that each group will need to have uh, prepared and planned for. First of those would be a Tidy Towns plan. Um, the second is a, a Tidy Towns map. And then the most important piece of information where you capture all of your project work is the 2021 entry form. Now it's an image of the 2019 form I have there, but we are working on the 2021 entry form and that will be made available to everybody uh, in the coming weeks when the competition is launched. So we go down through each of these individual items now one by one. So the first one is our Tidy Towns plan. And this can be a three year or a five year plan. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to be time bound, but it is good in, in, in some way to have a, a plan that you're working towards. Uh, a lot of projects you will be working on aren't achievable in a short space of time. So uh, the three years or five years in, in, in a way are a good way to start. Um, your, your three year or five year plan, it's basically about an awareness of your area, um, all of the things that are happening in your town or village. Um, and these, you'd be looking at these in line with the competition categories. In preparation of these plans, it is, it is a good idea and it's advisable that you consult widely uh, throughout your area. So with your residents, perhaps you have residents associations um, in, in your town or village, maybe you have businesses, so you'd want to consult with your business and property owners. Also with your local authority offices and with any relevant agencies in relation to some of the project work that you would be doing. Examples here would be if you're looking at old heritage buildings, you may want to consult with the Heritage Council. If you've uh, green spaces, you may want to, you're, you're planning a tree planting regime or whatever, you may want to consult with the Tree Council of Ireland and so on, the National Parks and Wildlife Agency, a lot of brilliant agencies out there that have a wealth of information to share with you. Uh, again, with the Tidy Towns plan, um, it's always good to look at your most recent adjudication report. Now, this is this is relevant to groups who have entered the competition before. Your adjudication your adjudication report will itemise areas where the adjudicator feels you should maybe pay some attention. Projects that you may not have thought about, they may give you some food for thought to look at different areas of your place. Um, for new groups maybe who um, haven't entered the competition before or for groups who are coming back maybe after a break, um, it's basically an audit of your place and it's good to get a number of people maybe to do these because everybody looks at things differently. So maybe walk through your town or your village, um, look at your buildings, look at your streetscape, uh, look at your green spaces and again all the time relaying this back to the competition categories and any changes that may come around in the competition categories. Now, there are no changes to the to the competition as such or the delivery of you know the, the categories that you will be asked to report on. 
they are the same as they have been in recent years. Um, looking at derelict buildings, looking at um, you know cultural projects, heritage projects, historic projects, you know various things, and also keeping in mind all of the other groups that would be. Um, in your place so even your schools your national schools your secondary schools they may have a wealth of, of project work that they're working on that could tie in nicely with a lot of the projects that you might be planning down the road the sustainable development goals they're they're a UN directive there's 17 different goals they will form part of the competition for this year and for the years to come so it's it's a good idea to keep those in the back of your head as well when you're looking at this uh, three-year plan the Tidy Towns Unit have been sharing a, a lot of information on these sustainable development goals over the last year or so, and we'll continue to keep you updated and to provide information to you where they may be associated with your projects. Moving on to the second key piece of information that's required for your entry, and that is a map, uh, bearing in mind that the adjudicator who comes to your, to your town or village or who is looking at your application form uh, may never have been there before. So your map is their guide to direct them to the various projects that you've been working on and to key areas of your town or village that you want them to focus upon. Um, your map should be ideally A4 or A3, it shouldn't be any bigger. Um, A4 is, is plenty big enough for um, a small town or a village. For some large urban areas or, or larger towns or maybe where your projects are spaced out over a geographical area, you may need to look at an A3 page. Um, Hand-drawn maps are perfectly acceptable. This, this is just a sample here of a map that we have drawn up just to give you a guide and we'll go through it a bit further. But hand-drawn maps are perfect. There's, there's absolutely no need to go getting professional maps. Um, if you have a map you can work on, that's great. But and drawn with, with, you know, and in the case of the maps, um, less is definitely more. Uh, we don't need every item and every building detailed in the map, just key areas that can help your adjudicator to, to navigate through your town or village. Clear identifiable landmarks. So things like your church, your schools, um, if you have a library building, if you have a key historic uh, monument or something that will be easily identifiable and recognizable to your adjudicator when they arrive. On that map, you should have a legend of these landmarks, again, which is to, to help your adjudicator through your town and also a legend of your projects. So any of the project work that you have been doing and that you want to present to your adjudicator as part of your current application should be listed clearly on that map. So here we have just a, a quick example of, of what a map would look like. Here on the map, we have our legend of, of main landmarks. So we have them numbered. Number one here is our church. Number two is our secondary school. Um, three over here is our GAA pitch. And up here four, we have a community center. It's also the national school uh, noted here. Um, you don't have to worry about every single building. If, if they're not of significance to your application, these main key points will be sufficient that your adjudicator can can reference where about in, in the town or village that you're, you're drawing their attention to. Again, your map can be color coded. Some groups like to do this. So we have eight different categories in the competition. So on this map, again, you could have, um, you know, you could, be, you could be working on that the red ones are your community planning and involvement, the green are your green spaces and landscaping and so on, but you don't need to do that. That's entirely up to yourself. If it makes it easier for you to work through the projects, that's fine. It's also a good idea to keep a blank copy and reuse it from year to year. If your adjudicator comments on your map that it needs improvement work, maybe try and implement those for the next year's competition. But if they compliment you on your map and that it's, it's, it's fit for purpose and it's usable and it was easy to use and helped them navigate your town or village, perhaps keep a copy of that map. So this copy at the moment that we have here, there aren't any Tidy Towns projects referenced on it. So if you were doing a project um, up here, your community garden, you might be doing something at your community centre, you might be doing something along your greenway at your GAA pitch, you might be working with the secondary school or the national school. That's where you can then plot all of your projects onto your map. And by keeping a copy, it means that you have a clean copy for next year's application and you can just start plotting again as you go along. Um, 
it's also a good idea to plan a route for your adjudicator. Now, this may not be relevant to villages or that, but if, if you've if you've a, a number of projects or if, if your village is spread out like some villages are, it may be a good idea to direct your adjudicator that when they come to town to park by the church, and then you can basically navigate them as if you were walking with them through the town, you can tell them turn left here and you should come upon project number four, project number five, and so on. Um, if, you, if you're not working with the hand-drawn map, uh, the My Maps facility on Google or the Ordnance Survey of Ireland urban or rural place maps might, might be workable for you. Um, Google Street View or Google Aerial Maps, sometimes there's, there's too much detail in them. So it's very hard if you get a map like that to then start trying to plot on your Tidy Towns projects. It can become too cluttered and too hard for the adjudicator to follow through. The map in itself as well can be a project, it can be a piece of work, you know, it's, um, you know, it is that a lot of work goes into maps, so it can, it can be, you know, put forward as, as a project. It could be something you do in collaboration with perhaps your uh, secondary school, maybe a TY student would like to take on the role, or if there's somebody in the area who's good at art, you know, they, they can become a nice piece of work to showcase your, your place and the work you've been doing throughout the, throughout the competition year. Your local authority may be also able to help you if they have maps, they may have uh, planning maps or whatever of your area. Again, high level maps that don't uh, go down into the nitty gritty of every single building. Again, leaving space for you to plot your Tidy Towns projects on them. So the third and I suppose most important element of the competition entry then will be the uh, entry form. Now, just to note the competition has not launched yet for 2021. Um, and we were hoping to launch, you know, at the end of March in line with when we normally launch the competition. But as a result of the current pandemic and the ongoing health advice in place, uh, we're uh, just waiting for things to settle somewhat um, and we'll hopefully be launching in the coming weeks. But more information will follow on that from the unit. So don't don't be worrying about missing anything. You know that the, the competition hasn't launched yet. When it does, all of the forms and all of the relevant information will be available there on the Tidy Towns website at www.tidytowns.ie. We would encourage all groups that when you are filling in the form that you be careful to fill all of the sections, in particular the About You section, which is the first part of the form, which details all of the contact information for your group. We ask you to put in your name of your place in Irish. Uh, since 2019, we've started recording all of the place names in Irish in the results booklet. And we'd like to continue doing that, but in some places we need uh, some support from yourselves to get the correct Irish uh, translation of your place names. Also your contact details and all about your group. That's how we, we share any information with you throughout the year. There are eight individual categories within the competition. And again, we would like to you know, encourage groups to complete those categories uh, as best you can. Um, you will notice there's one small change on the entry form for 2021, and that is the sustainable development goals. Um, again, as I referenced earlier, there are 17 different sustainable development goals. So each of the categories will have the relevant goals that are applicable to that category listed here. So for the streetscape and public spaces, we can see that at least five of those 17 goals can be linked to the projects you're doing. And if you don't uh, register them or record them this year, there's no problem there. It's just that you're doing the work anyway. So a lot of the, the majority of the projects the Tidy Towns groups are doing are linked to one or more of the sustainable development goals and the information we've been sharing in the Tidy Towns newsletter um, over the past year has, has really demonstrated that, that Know, you're one group of society that are already uh, addressing the sustainable development goals and helping to, to achieve those targets. Um, again, for your entry form, each of the projects that you have worked on, they should first of all be plotted on your map. And I suppose going back to the map, it's good to group them together so that if you are sending an adjudicator, if you're directing them through your town or village and we'll say they park at the church, that as they leave the church, they will come to project number one, project number two, and so on. Doesn't necessarily mean that those projects are all in the same category. They could be spread across the eight categories, but for ease of access for your adjudicator going through town, 
rather than them having to be going back and forth, back and forth, that as they're navigating their way through your place, that they're coming upon each of the projects, they can then go to the relevant section of the form where that project will be uh, detailed more for them with photographs, with links to various uh, social media reports or whatever the case may be. So it's very important that you reference the number on that map to the relevant part of the application form. Again, there are three sections sections that a project can be categorized as it can be categorized as a new project this would be a project that may have been on your uh, three-year plan previously that you've now uh, brought to fruition it can be a maintenance project which could be a project that you've developed a number of years ago but you are continuing to maintain it and the third element is a future project so these are some of the items that will be in your three-year or five-year plan but you just haven't delivered them fully yet. You may be in the initial uh, development stage of them. You may be, uh, you know, it could be a three-year or a five-year project in itself. So you may be partially through that. So it, it's always good to keep your adjudicator informed on progress. It may be that you're waiting for funding to come through, to wait for supports or additional resources to become available. So all of that information should be shared with your adjudicator. Now, one thing we want to reassure groups for 2021, um, you know, and this is across the board from the minister right through the department officials to our adjudicators, to our sponsor Super Value and all of our special award sponsors. We totally appreciate the year that has been. It's been a most difficult period for everybody, but more so, you know, for, for volunteers and for the elderly and for groups who have been involved in, in voluntary work like Tidy Towns. Um, so we don't want any group to feel that if you haven't been able to progress a project or initiative, if you haven't been in a position to get out and do your normal um, work that you love to do and that we really appreciate you doing, there's no problem with that. We just we would still like to hear from you, though. We would still encourage all groups to enter the competition for 2021 and just tell us, you know, if you haven't been able to do certain elements of the work, share that information with your adjudicator. Um, perhaps you've been involved in different initiatives in the community to keep your community together. And that has been hugely important. The, the COVID-19 Community Response Forum that um, our department has been involved in and that so many Tidy Towns groups around the country have been involved in with their local authorities has been invaluable to, to, to elderly residents or people who are cocooning throughout the lockdown periods. Perhaps you were delivering groceries or medicines it may have been delivering newspapers, church newsletters, just even a phone call. And that could be the phone call that meant, you know, somebody felt that someone was thinking of them and that they were in, in contact with their community. And that's that's important. I mean, community is hugely important to our department. We're, we're all about building sustainable communities. And Tidy Towns, the, the heart and soul of Tidy Towns is community. So keeping your community together and keeping your community, you know, mm -hmm motivated and encouraged you know if you haven't been doing project work you know there's a reason behind that but we still want to hear from you and we still want to hear how how your community has um dealt with the pandemic and how you've been able to the resilience the tidy towns groups show in fairness over years and years has been amazing so i'm sure that has been the case in the last 12 months um we would encourage groups to use photographs you know, uh, you could spend a huge amount of time working on, on an area in your town or village, do a fantastic job on it. When your adjudicator uh, looks at that, be it through photographs or, or on the ground, they can see how wonderful it looks. But if they can't, you know, if they haven't been there before or aren't familiar with your area, they can't appreciate the level of work you put into it. So it's always good to have photographs of before and after. You know, so if you're working on a green space, if you're working on some, you know, community projects, if it's working on, a, you know, a, a derelict building with with the consent of the owner, if it's, um, you know, various uh, community projects, it's always good to have a, a photograph of before and a photograph of after. It gives the adjudicator a great sense of the work that went into it and the community spirit that was involved. I suppose in the last year, so many of us have moved to uh, different ways of communication and different methods of, of telling each other what we've been doing and keeping in touch. Um, and we would like you to share that information with us. So if you've been involved in um, 
you know, if you have any material put up on YouTube, if you've been sharing videos on social media, perhaps you're on Facebook or Twitter. Um, if you're on any of these platforms, if you have a website, all of these should be recorded in your entry form and links given. So if you have project work that you've, you've recorded and put up on YouTube or put up on social media, include those links into your entry form and your adjudicator will be able to assess the work you've done in that sense through those links. Again, photos are a huge, um, you know, the, the cliche is a, a photograph speaks a thousand words, but that's definitely the case in some of these projects. So we would encourage you to use photographs. Um, this is a photograph here that came in from us, came into us uh, at Christmas um, for our, our uh, photography competition. So we would encourage you to put these photographs into the form, embedded into the form um, or in a Word document um, it's, you know, it's quite easy if you just click on your photograph wherever you have them saved onto your computer or on your phone, you can click on them and copy and paste them into a Word document. And by clicking on the corner of the picture, you can, you can drag it down to make it much smaller. So this A4 page here, we actually have um, eight photographs put onto this picture here. Um, so it, it means that the pictures are much smaller they will be easier to fit into your document. You can fit six to eight photographs on an A4 page, um, and you can also incorporate them into your into the body of the application form to the relevant category. But always please remember to include, you know, the reference to the project and maybe a small title of what the photograph uh, relates to. Um, in a bid to become more sustainable this year, you know, and in line with the public health advice, we are going to ask that groups who are entering the competition do so electronically. So we would encourage groups to send the entry form into us via email. Uh, this will uh, reduce or eliminate postage costs. It will also uh, alleviate or reduce the, the risk of people being out and about and having to go to post offices or whatever to post information onto us. And it will also allow us to forward your applications onto the adjudicator who has been assigned to your area while we are working remotely. Um, one of the main key changes of the uh, competition this year is again, going back to the public health advice and the travel restrictions that are in place, adjudication will be carried out remotely this year. So you should make every effort if possible to include photographs, to include links to uh, social media, links to reports that you have been involved in or reports that you are, are using to showcase some of the work that you have done. Um, it, and all of these links can be included in your entry form so that the adjudicator can, can refer to them when they're carrying out their adjudication on your town or village. Uh, please bear in mind also that when you are sending your entry forms into us electronically, there is a limit on the email size of 20 megabytes but this should be sufficient for you to submit all of the information relevant to your town or village. Many groups, huge amount of groups in recent years have been submitting their entry forms to us electronically. Um, there is also a way that if, if your entry is slightly over the 20 megabytes, you can in, submit it to us in what's known as a compressed zip folder. And I'll just go through that process with you now. So when you have the folder created on your laptop or your computer or whatever the case may be, if you right click on the uh, folder wherever you have it, so in this case we have our 2021 entry form here saved into our computer. If we right click on that we get this menu here and down here you'll see send to and coming out from that menu one of the options there is a compressed zip folder. So if you click on that your computer will automatically save a new version of your file. It will call it the same name as before, but it will now be a compressed zip folder. And you'll see this little icon beside it. It's like a little folder with a zip on it. It basically means that it has compressed it. It's all still, all of your information is still safe and still secure in there, but it's in, a, it's in a tighter format to be submitted to us through email. And when we receive your email with your compressed zip folder, we will simply be able to open it the same as if it was as if it was a normal folder. So it's just something to bear in mind that when you have incorporated all of your photographs and your map and your three-year plan, that if, if you're coming close to that limit size, 
um, to, to maybe go for that option and it, it may save some space for you. Just to, uh, on, on the um, email entries, all applications that are submitted to us uh, to the tidytowns at drcd.gov.ie mailbox will receive an email back straight away acknowledging that your email has been received. If you don't receive one of these emails, you should check uh, with us or maybe check your spam or your junk folder in your emails that that email may have gone in there. We will be, as we register applications as they've been received, we will be putting a list up on our Tidy Towns website um, on a daily basis of all of the groups that have been registered. So uh, about a week or so after the closing date, um, if your group hasn't been on, if they haven't appeared on that list on the website, we would encourage you to get in touch with the unit and we can, we can discuss that with you at the time to see if there's been an issue with your email coming through. So emails sent to tidytowns at drcd.gov.ie. A, re a reply email will issue to you automatically telling you that an email has been received by the unit from you. And as I said, as entries are registered, they will be put up on the Tidy Towns website on a daily basis. So you can just click on to the website, go to the county that your uh, centre is located in. And if your centre is located in that list, you've done all you need to do at that point. Your application for the 2020 competition has been received and registered. But if, you're, if your centre isn't on that list, we would encourage you to give us a call. So the Tidy Towns unit uh, in the department have been issuing a monthly newsletter for some time now, and it has been, it's proven very positive with groups. Uh, it issues to all registered groups on our database. So if you're not receiving this newsletter, please get in touch with us, send us an email or give us a call and we'll, we'll add you to that list. It's a great way for groups to share their information with, with ourselves, and we're happy then to share that on to other Tidy Towns groups all over the country. And the, the distribution of this newsletter has grown month on month. It now goes to environmental awareness officers, to heritage officers, to all of our sponsors, uh, and it goes through social media on Facebook and Twitter. So its reach is endless, I suppose. So it's a great way to showcase work that you have been doing. And it's a great way for, of encouragement for other groups, you know, that, that may see things that have been done in other parts of the country and, and think, you know, maybe we can do that. All of the past issues of the newsletter are placed on our website in the About Us section and the link is given there. So feel free to, to, to go on there and have a look. We also run regular short stories and poems and everything. We have some fabulous poets out there who really uh, keep us motivated by their, their wonderful words. So if that's your forte, we'd love to hear from you, maybe artwork or poetry work or short stories. You know, it's, it's nice to have a bit of variety in there. Uh, funding, I suppose that's a key part for any group to, to continue and to be sustainable is, is finances. And we're very aware that over the past 12 months, it has been virtually impossible for groups to do any fundraising. Uh, we know that Tidy Towns groups across the country rely solely on their fundraising and also on uh, sponsorship and, and, and grant aid funding from, from your local authority, perhaps. But to to assist with that, Minister Humphreys, uh, the Minister for Rural and Community Development, announced a package of €1 million Euro just there before Christmas to help groups in preparing for the 2021 competition. Um, at this stage, all groups have now been contacted. All of the eligible groups were contacted in early January. And in order to be eligible for that funding, you would have had to have entered the competition in either of the years 2017, 2018 or 2019. Uh, the closing date for that uh, funding application was last weekend, but the Minister has now extended it to March 19th. So we would encourage groups out there, if you haven't already submitted your application form to uh, Pubble, who are administering the grant funding on our behalf, we would encourage you to do so now. And if you haven't received that form, um, likewise, please get in touch with the unit and we'll be able to get a form uh, emailed out to you. Uh, just to make you aware that the Department of Rural and Community Development uh, offer a range of other funding opportunities which may be, you know, applicable to some of the project work you might be considering doing. Um, the Town and Village Renewal Fund, which is in operation now for the last five years, uh, provides funding to towns and villages uh, with populations of under 10,000 people. 
Um, leader funding is there as well uh, across all parts of the country through your local action groups. Chlor funding, outdoor recreation infrastructure scheme, which provides funding to greenways and to smaller uh, rural outdoor recreation uh, projects that you might be thinking about in your area. And we also have the urban and rural regeneration fund. And finally, then the community enhancement funding. All of these funding opportunities are, a lot of them are delivered through your local authority. So either through your local authority or get in touch with the department or visit www.gov.ie for further information. It, it may be, uh, some of those may have something that, that is tailored to some of the projects you're considering um, in the coming years. Uh, the Tidy Towns unit, again, on social media, you know, we, we see that so many groups are, are now moving into this area. So we share a lot of our information on Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you're not following us already on either of these two portals, we'd love, to, we'd love for you to join us and, and share any information we're putting up there. And also to keep a watch on our website, uh, www.tidytowns.ie. Um, the unit, we're based in Ballina in County Mayo, uh, but over the past number of months, uh, you know, in line with public health advice, we have been working from home, uh, but we're, we'd be delighted to hear from groups, um, whatever your queries are, if there's any way at all we can help you, that's what we're, we're here to help. So you can email us at tidytowns at drcd.gov.ie. Uh, you can call my colleague Anne on the number given there, or Helen. And my own number is given there as well. If you want to give any of us a ring at any time, we'd love to hear from you. So before I finish up, just to recap, I suppose, on the key points that the groups need to be aware of for 2021. One is that the competition hasn't launched yet. Uh, we're, we're waiting for, for public health advice to, to, to improve somewhat and, and that we're in a position to help to launch the competition. You know, the health and safety of the volunteers and the tidy towns groups around the country is our utmost you know, consideration. And it's only when it's safe for us to do that that we will be launching the competition. Um, the second key point, I suppose, is that entry to the competition this year will be online. And the, the normal timeframes will apply. Once we launch the competition, we will give six or seven weeks for groups to complete their application form. And then after the closing date, the adjudication process will start. But again, the adjudication process will be done remotely this year. So again, it's in line with public health advice, but also for groups that we are conscious that once the, in a normal year, June or July, were always the peak months for adjudication. Groups would be very much on tender hooks, uh, wondering when or if the adjudicator had came yet. So by it being done remotely, it removes that level of um, anxiety, I suppose, on groups that, you know, we are aware that so many of you are out, you know, while being socially distant, doing the best you can to keep, keep your projects tipping along and to keep your places looking so well. And so many groups have mentioned that to us and individuals that, during the lockdown, when people were limited to two kilometers or five kilometers, that they really saw what their own areas maybe had to offer, things that they may have taken for granted or maybe not have had an awareness of before, um, and, and noted the great work that Tidy Towns groups do. So I suppose with the adjudication being done remotely, it's, um, it removes that, that level of, of anxiety or, or feeling that there's a need to be out doing project work or, or whatever, depending on how restrictions are. Again, you know, health and safety of the volunteers is paramount. Um, so again, just Minister Humphreys in giving her extension to that grant funding yesterday, encouraged all groups to apply. And again, we, we I just want to emphasize that point. You know, please don't feel that um, if you haven't completed projects that you were perhaps working towards or that you haven't you know brought to full fruition please don't feel that you can't come to us with part projects or you know limited work we totally appreciate that over the last 12 months it has been virtually impossible for groups to to meet and to plan and to complete projects you know but we still we still would love to hear from groups there are groups out there who have been entering the competition 
since 1958. Uh, perhaps there are groups that have only entered it one or two years. Maybe you want to keep your record intact. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and, you know, it's once you're engaging with us, we know that the group are still active and still together. And when we come out the other side of this, you know, they're the groups that will, you know, be, be ready and, and, and able to continue with their work. So just to close, I want to thank Sinead for giving us the opportunity and all our colleagues in Limerick City and County Council. And um, I'm happy to thank you all for your time, for listening, and happy to take any questions now that you want to put towards us. Thanks so much, John. That was a wonderful presentation. We have lots, lots of questions. <laughs> we'll be delighted to hear. OK, um, the first one is, are there template plans available? for the three year or five year plan there aren't really i suppose everybody's plans are different and we see the plans coming through you know in in the competition over the years some can be very elaborate but they really don't need to be it's really about an awareness of your area so even a, a couple of pages one pager could be enough you don't have to go into detail of what you want to do with these projects it might be a simple thing of you know, a couple of your community members may be doing a walk through your town or village, you know, albeit socially distanced at the moment, or doing it on your own and then just comparing your notes and just putting down bullet points of, you know, we'd like to do something on such a street. We'd like to look at the community garden. We'd like to look at maybe a composting facility. We'd like to do an awareness campaign about sustainability, about reducing our waste it just they're just things that you think your town or village would be able to deliver and it's to be realistic as well we don't want groups putting huge amounts of pressure on themselves you know coming up with all sorts of wonderful ideas that you know really aren't achievable it's 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 um you know there isn't need for for hugely intricate detail in these plans they're just to give the adjudicator an awareness that you're you have a knowledge of what the competition is about and each of the categories and if there are things in your area that you are aware of um, even if you can't do anything about them at the moment you know maybe you have an issue with derelict buildings maybe you have an issue with premises that are empty um and just thinking about ways of doing that. Some some tidy towns groups use empty shops, again, with the owner's permission. They may use them to showcase project work in the town. So if your local school, again, sadly this year, there won't be any St. Patrick's Day parades, but maybe some of the schools have done project work. Maybe some business that, that is no longer using their premises could showcase some of that work in their shop windows. You know, it, it gives a bit of life to the street uh, scape in your town. Um, so it's really every plan is different. Um, so there doesn't have to be a defined plan to it. And if you are looking for a template, a good one to use might be to use the Green Schools um, action plan template and just do it year by year. You know, yeah, just, or even just take the eight competition categories that are there at the moment, put them out on a page and maybe under some of those categories you won't have um any project work this year or for the next yeah. couple of years and that's fine but you can review your plan next year and maybe something will come into your head then that might fit in lovely uh, how accurate does the map have to be and are you deducted points no you wouldn't be deducted points and again for groups who don't enter this year or who don't have work done we want to assure groups that there's no negative consequences in any way shape or form for for entering or not entering you know, we want to assure groups of that. Maps don't have to be to scale. They don't have to be, again, as I said, less is more with the maps. The more intricate sometimes they are, the more confusing they are. So if, you're, if your town is based around a crossroads, a simple cross on a page will do and plot down maybe a church or, or a large building that the adjudicator can work from, plot down a car park and then start plotting in your projects you know, again, over time, you can develop your map and your adjudicator will be will be quite supportive of you. If they feel that there is something on your map that isn't working, they will advise you and help you to try and come up with a solution for it. Will the final, sorry, John, the next question, will the final adjudicator's report reflect how many sustainable development goals we succeeded at during the year? Will it reflect which categories we achieved? 
It may. And again, we have a number of independent adjudicators. But one thing to note is that I suppose the adjudication this year, while it has been done remotely and groups, you know, will, you know, they will be based on the information that they can give. And, and adjudicators will look at previous year's reports to get a sense for what that town or village are like. You know, the adjudication reports this year may be shorter than they have been in other years. So for groups to be aware of that. And sometimes groups have so many projects that it's impossible for an adjudicator to reference each one individually. Um, again, the sustainable development goals are only coming into the competition really as a base this year for the first time. So we would love to see groups starting to reference them. But again, there's no negative marking if you don't. There's no problems if you don't. And the adjudicators will try where possible to to acknowledge and appreciate the work you've done on it. It is something we will be we will be all come more comfortable with as time goes on. But, you know, for groups to try and make an effort, but not to feel overwhelmed by it or, or worried by it in any way. Yeah. Um, John in Castle Connell, is it correct that a future project could be mentioned in the entry form? which should not be listed on the map as there is nothing to show yet. Yeah, well, you, you, if you had done some work on it, so if maybe you had done a survey in your area or, or you've done some research work, you could put it down there if you wished. Now, there are some projects that won't ever appear on a map. So if you've done sustainability awareness raising workshops, perhaps you've done information sharing through Facebook or through a community newsletter, those kind of things aren't tangible that you can physically plot them onto a map, but they should be still referenced in the application form under the relevant category. So future projects, yes, they will be on your three year or your five year plan. Reference them in your application form, give the adjudicator whatever information you have to hand, how far that project has come. Um, and again, it's showing an awareness. that Maybe you haven't lived, delivered the project yet, but if everything falls into plan and into line, that is something your group aim to look at working towards in the coming years. Very good. Now I'm going to interrupt the questions and answers just for a second. I'm going to do a poll. If Limerick Tidy Towns groups would like a presentation on the sustainability goals and tidy towns, John has given me a presentation. I will do it if he want it um, on the 10th of the 3rd. So that's next Wednesday at 8 p.m. If the Limerick group say yes, then others can attend. So I'm launching that poll now. It's yes, I would like a presentation or no, I do not want a presentation. Um, and we'll see how that goes. We'll answer that later. OK, what month, John, back to the questions and answers, what month, month would you expect the judging to commence? Okay, well, the time frame will be that once the competition launches, we give a six to seven week period for uh, groups to complete their form. After that, then it takes about two weeks for us to get all of the entries registered and allocated to the adjudicator. Mm -hmm. And then they get about two months to do the adjudication process. So in a normal year, we would have launched by the end of March. The six or seven weeks brings us up to the middle of May. The two weeks for registration brings us up to the 1st of June, at which point adjudication would start. So adjudication would be starting throughout June and July. So if for argument's sake, we don't get to launch until the end of April, you just kind of move everything on by a month. But there will be ample time given to groups. You know, if, if the, the launch date is pushed out, it's not going to impact on the time they will be given. In fact, groups should be using these weeks to kind of start plotting information, start thinking about their map, thinking about their three year or five year plan. Um, again, it's hard for groups at the moment to come together to work towards completing a form, but they could look at something whereby, um, you know, each individual, you know, everybody has their own skills and strengths. That if you have an expert in your area who looks after the kind of green spaces, they could be kind of putting together um, the pieces of text for the entry form so that when it does come out, they're kind of they're half ready okay um 
this has kind of been answered already uh, should the entry form be pdf format but you have covered that pdf or a compressed yeah it can be pdf and i think in some cases if it's converted to a pdf it might it might be more condensed so it might it might take up less file space for sending it through to us but either the file as a pdf or as a word if you feel it's going to be over the 20 megabytes to consider the compressed zip folder as we referenced earlier and send it through to us that way so this is um this is just looking for confirmation that adjudicators will not be visiting the areas only judging entry forms and maps no the uh, you know again it's down to the public health advice and you know even if we come down to kind of level three really restrictions are still kind of on a county level and we don't have an adjudicator based in every county in the country and again it would be unfair to ask adjudicators to you know to judge their own county where they're living so uh you know we feel in the interests of health and safety for groups and to again take that pressure away from groups that they don't have to be worrying for for months on end when the adjudicator is coming it, it makes it uh, achievable. It's different. We know it's different and we appreciate it's not what anybody, you know, in an ideal world, we'd be continuing as normal. But, you know, we feel it's better to deliver the competition, albeit different, than not to deliver a competition at all. So we're aiming on that, uh, you okay. know, plan at the moment that it will all be done remotely. Um, our next question is, how detailed should descriptions be for each project? bullet points or pros? Yeah, well, well, bullet points. And uh, it, again, it depends on what you have to tell us. It depends on the level of work you've put in. Um, and if, if it's a maintenance project, your adjudicator will, will have seen that or it will be referenced in previous adjudication reports. But, you know, feel free to, to you know, a Word document can take a huge amount of, of text and stuff before you come up anywhere near your 20 megabytes. Uh, as I said, there's there's plenty of scope there within the 20 megabyte limit for a group to submit all of the relevant information that they, they want to get through to us. Yes. Um, okay. Is there a detailed information available on the Tidy Town site on the sustainable, sustainable development goals? And uh, Stephanie would like to have more details. No, there, there isn't anything on the website apart from, well, we've been featuring you know, um, we featured a newsletter. Ennis Tidy Towns have been doing um, fact sheets over the last number of months and have kindly shared them with the unit for us to distribute them as part of the newsletter. And we have been featuring a lot of stories on the sustainable development goals, but we have, you know, presentation that we, we could put up, but it, it's it's very similar to the one that we've shared with yourself. And, and judging by the poll there, Sinead, I think you're, you better fix your diary for... Okay. for next week yeah <laughs> okay. it's um you know again we don't want to alarm groups with these you know they're very much for you know around the whole sustainable area you know the first of the sustainable development goals is combat poverty now i mean for anyone to think you know what can i do for that but all of the sustainable development goals are broken down into bite-sized pieces that really you can do in your own home so that combat poverty element is you can meet that goal by simply donating to a charity shop, yeah. organizing a, a bring and buy event, an upcycling event. Think about things before you put them into, into landfill or whatever. You know, everything has a use. One man's trash is another man's treasure, as people say. You know, I've seen cases where people have been using old ceramic teapots and turning them into bird feeders. You know, there's so much... Um, I think it's in Nishtig that have a wall with um, loads of old boots um, and they're just used as planters, you know, so things that, you know, it's just about rethinking. And I suppose we're very familiar with the three R's, the reduce, reuse, recycle, but there's also the fourth one, it's rethink, you know, so to think about something, if you can't reuse it and you can't reduce it or recycle it, maybe it has another use and, and tidy towns groups in fairness have been really you know, instrumental in, in, in thinking and, and working around all those kind of things. Yes. Now, the next one is explain a legend identifier, please. Okay, so a legend identifier. So if it's a 
again, we'll say you've you've invited your adjudicator to park at the church. And, and if you're doing the little walk through route, and again, you don't have to, but if you want it, it's a nice thing to do. And again, to to advise the adjudicator where the various facilities are, maybe toilets and things like that. If they haven't been in your town or village before, it's just nice to give them a sense of welcome as well. Explain but it, so, cool. yeah, so your legend really is if when they come out of the church and they're you, you know, you may have a, a bottle bank or a bring bank and you've done some work around that. That could be your first project. So that could be project number one. And it's basically number one on your map. But then when you come to filling up your entry form, that project may be going in under your green spaces. It may be going in under your um, approach road streets and lanes. So wherever it is in, in the entry form, it still keeps the number one that you've given it on the map. And if it's a new project, you just push the letter N beside it. If it's a maintenance project, you push the letter M. And if it's a future project, you put FP. So it gives the adjudicator an awareness that, well, this is a new project I'm looking at. So again, they'd like to see possibly two photos there, a photo of, of perhaps the Bring Centre or the Bottle Bank before you intervened, and then a picture of it afterwards. And again, if it's a maintenance project, you know, just they'll see from the photograph how well you're maintaining that project that perhaps you developed a year ago or two years ago, or in some cases, 10 years ago. Okay. Um, can more than one person in a tidy towns group get the newsletter? Yes. Um, well, we do encourage groups and I know a lot of groups share it through their social media. Um, but yeah, if, if, if groups feel that, you know, it isn't been distributed, if they contact us, but it is always put up on the website. I gave the link there, www.tidytowns.ie and under the About Us section, all of the newsletters since we started uh, present preparing them in 2019, they're all there and they're, they're a nice block of information, even for groups now at this point to go back over them. Maybe, maybe the personnel in your committee have changed, so maybe you weren't receiving the newsletters, but they are there on the website so that even if the sustainable development goals are a piece of information you'd like to, to read up a little bit more on, all of that information is there in each of the newsletters. Um, John, sorry if I could just interrupt again and just say, folks, um, there's a number of raised hands that we have 52 questions to answer here so i'm not opening it to the floor please use the questions and answers session if we don't manage to get to all your questions and answers uh, or questions today um please you can email us you can either i email um john on on the email he's given and it should be in the chat i think i put it in the chat very yeah early no on. problem yeah no please yeah. if anybody um, has grouped questions or you can or if, email me and between yeah. us we will we will sort that out um just an explanation for chlor funding uh, john a brief one if you will okay chlor funding it's it's a scheme that's been in place for a number of years and and it, it it's it's in the majority of the country but there are some areas where it isn't and they they provide funding for a number of different kinds of projects you know um in recent years, they've provided funding for sensory gardens, for community gardens, for first responders, um, sports clubs, you know, so there's a lot of different, um, you know, maintenance projects around the country that, that can be funded under CLOR. So it's, again, it's something that groups should maybe think about. It's, it's the, the basis for eligibility is around population decrease. So areas that would have suffered population decrease over time would be classed as CLOR areas. Thank you, John. Will the scoring of points be different this year due to COVID-19 restrictions as groups will not be able to meet to do projects safely? No, well, the scoring won't be different as such, but there will be a huge awareness there and a reassurance is being given to groups on, on all aspects of the work that if you haven't been in a position to, to complete projects, to tell the adjudicator why that is and, and to tell the adjudicator how your group have been dealing with the pandemic as I said, perhaps you've been involved in the COVID community forum. Um, you know, so it, it's it will still be a competition, but but you know there will be there will be fairness throughout, as there always is. But there will be a greater awareness there that groups, you know, through no fault of their own, have have not been able to progress some of their projects. But again, we would still encourage those groups to engage with us. Yeah, and that's kind of you've kind of answered the next question where somebody is concerned because of a high age profile that 
very little has been achieved and they're worried about the complex or the application form but it is kind of as you've just mentioned just do your best with yeah and, exactly yeah and you will be understanding and there will be no negative marking on the no page. there'll be no negative consequence for a group who who in one or more of the projects haven't been in a position to uh, or one or more of the categories who haven't been in a position to develop or deliver a project and again for groups who feel they just can't enter this year there will be no negative consequence but we would we, we very much hear from groups over time that the entering the competition is seen as a continuity of of maybe something that was started many years ago so please feel free to continue to do that don't don't feel any way burdened or problemed but or troubled by by the lack of progress that's been made the fact that you're engaging with us we know that you're still there and you're still involved and you'll come back next year and and you know pick up where you left off uh, just a, a brief comment maybe here a group that was hoping to enter for the first time but were disappointed they didn't qualify for funding under this round the tidy towns grant that was yeah i know the fund and in fairness you know the funding in recent years that has been announced in the last four years the department have provided over five million euro to tidy towns groups but it, it has been you know and it's very difficult i suppose there is always eligibility and and terms and conditions around funding but to be fair to groups that are currently in the competition, it, it's it over recent years it was based on an eligibility criteria that you had to have entered the competition in any one of the previous three years. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there was a scope there over three year period. If you entered in any one of those, you were eligible. Um, now this one, I I'm actually not quite sure what we're being asked. If this, if it is our first time entering, would we qualify under the one million funding? No, again, that's the grant funding that that's was announced before Christmas. Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it would be eligibility over the three previous years. This one is from one of our urban tidy towns groups. We have carried out a comprehensive profile on our community on family size, age, elderly, taken from the census, so we can help address the needs of the community. We can use the, or can we use this in our application? Yes, you can, you can, you, they can use that in their community planning and involvement. Okay. And again, it's all about, you know, an awareness, and I use that word maybe a bit, but it is about awareness of what's in your community, what you have to work with, and the resources available to you. So by doing a census like that, or an audit, they can maybe target then maybe some of their younger demographic, maybe through their Faroiga club, maybe through their transition year. A lot of the national schools, and I know that they've just recently reopened in part, but you know they have they're very active in the green schools area, um, and so many of them are involved with with tidy towns, and so many tidy towns groups have a junior tidy towns group. So, you know, to have that kind of work done will will put them in in touch with all of those different communities and age groups in their community. And actually, just another thing in relation to schools at the minute, many of them are kind of doing outdoor classrooms as well, just a little bit more yeah. than what they had been. So it's just just something to consider in terms of the nature in your locality. Um, is it possible to get some Tidy Towns high-vis jackets, please? <laughs> yes, well, our sponsor, Super Value, over, over, over years have been, and, and we're delighted to be working with them. They've been sponsoring the competition now for 30 years. They, through their local um, chain of stores, their community stores, they they provide the high vis bibs and also sometimes the litter pickers and and packs for for groups starting off. So what I would encourage you to do is maybe check with your local Super Value store and see if they have a stock of the bibs or the litter pickers. And if if they can't source them for you, come back to us in the unit. And we'll check with with head office and see if we can organise that through the local store for you. Okay. Can we include work of 2019 and 20? Yes, the last competition was in 2019. So the Tidy Towns year starts once the competition closes. So to, to explain that, so in 2019, we'll say the closing date was, I think it was around the 17th of May or so. An adjudication started on the 1st of June, and that's when the 2020 cycle commenced. So we're currently still looking at work carried out since the 1st of June uh, 2019. Um, so so when, the twin, sorry, when the 2019 competition closed and the adjudication started on the 1st of June 2019, 
um, any project work done since that date. So really groups have two years to, to look at, but they don't, you know, if you haven't been recording photographs or things like that, again, please don't worry about it. Share with your adjudicator what project work you've done, what progress you've made in that period. And, and that's what you will be adjudicated upon. Okay, a couple more now. We've dealt with the kind of, but just in case, um, the remote adjudication. So basically an assessment will be done on paper only this year, no visits to the town. You might just cover the online bit for groups that are on social media and that as well, John. Okay, so yes, the, the adjudication will be done remotely. And again, it's, it's, it's in line with public health advice, both for the, for the adjudicators um, and for the groups that they don't feel that sense of, of pressure attached to them that they should be out and, and, you know, 24 hours a day being prepared and being always ready for the adjudicator to arrive. So it will all be done remotely. And in relation to the online element of it, you know, some groups are on Facebook and social media, Twitter, Instagram, maybe some groups use YouTube, some groups may have um, a website. Now, if you don't have those, that doesn't matter. You can still explain to your adjudicator what you've been doing, how you've been engaging with your community. Maybe there's a community newsletter that you do. Maybe there's a community notice board where you put information up. Some groups have WhatsApp groups. Um, you know, So all of the different modes of communication that you share information with. Now, as part of that 1 million fund, one of the eligible elements of expenditure for this year was to, if you needed to get assistance with videography or capturing work that you have done. Um, so that's something maybe groups could think about. You know, if if a, a lot of groups I think have been uh, selecting that as one of the key areas that they would spend some of that funding on. So if you need to, to get maybe somebody in your, and, and it doesn't have to be professional, you know, there are groups, you know, even individuals nowadays that, and we saw that with the photography competition we launched before Christmas, the quality of some of the imagery we received was fantastic, just from Tidy Towns groups across the country. Um, so, you know, if, if you're recording any videos like that, if you're, if you're sharing them on Facebook and maybe that's where some of your younger groups, again, that group who did the census, maybe that's where some of your younger groups could support you. If you don't have a presence on social media, there's no charge. You can just simply create a Facebook page for your Tidy Towns group. And maybe someone in your group, you know, as I said earlier, everybody has a different skill. Some people are good on their trees. Some are very artistic. Maybe somebody's contribution to the local Tidy Towns group is that we'll we'll set up and maintain a Facebook page for you. So yeah. and little videos of work you've been done doing can all be stored there and the links given to your adjudicator in your entry form. Actually, John, somebody has raised, I think it's in the chat, I saw it pop up. Just be careful in terms of PDFs that your links mightn't, you, they mightn't be clickable links if you okay. send them on a PDF. Yes, so and that's something careful, we, we do. And again, I, I should have thought of that. We do that ourselves with the with the newsletter. When we're sending the newsletter out to groups, we, we send it as a PDF, but we also send a Word document with all of our links, all links so that groups can actually click into the Word document on the relevant link and it brings them straight to the to the article or the application or whatever the piece, the article of information in question. And um, also the there was a lovely comment in about the newsletter, how positive it is, how, how good people and useful they find it and that they share it amongst all their groups. Um, I'm not too sure how relevant this is here, but is there a problem with public grants 2019 and 21 not being spent by the rel by the July of the relevant year? No, and again, you know, again, we, we, we have discussed this. We're aware that, you know, the, the funding was launched at Christmas time. And really since that, uh, shops and, and garden centres and hardware providers, the majority of them have been closed. Um, we hope that will soon change, but groups again shouldn't be concerned about this. The department will, will be flexible where it possibly can. You know, if, if you are contacted later in the year to provide receipts or information in relation to how your grant was expended, you know, we will work with groups in that sense. You know, there's people, you know, we don't want groups to be worrying about any element of the work. We, we totally appreciate that 
you're all volunteers w without the work you do there wouldn't be a competition and again the comment that came in on the newsletter without the groups sharing the information with us there wouldn't be a newsletter there's only so much information that we can share with the groups but it's the groups that are sharing the information with us telling us their stories and we then are happy to share those stories out further so um yeah we're, we work with groups yeah and um, are the side competitions going ahead this year they are yes we're delighted to announce that all of our spe special award sponsors have uh come back uh totally supportive and willing to work with us this year in fact we have a number of new sponsors who have who have come on board this year so definitely something to look out for and to encourage groups to not be afraid of the special awards we only bring special awards into the competition if they align with one or more of the current categories so if you're doing a project work um you know under one of the categories it may well be that that's what you just have to apply for under the special award it doesn't have to be new or different projects the projects you're already doing um and we have seen over the years that some groups you know can can do very well the prizes attached to the special awards are very very nice prizes and such as such um not all cash prizes some of them are are supports from from various sponsors through education and awareness um, so definitely something that groups should consider yeah. and we are looking at maybe extending the closing dates of those because we are aware that groups sometimes feel that you know their focus is specifically on the main entry form to get that in yeah. and a lot of the closing dates for the special awards are the same date so it is something we are looking at depending on when we get to launch the competition that the closing date for those special awards may be a couple of weeks afterwards so when you get the main entry form gone out of your way you can then maybe focus on and the entry forms for the special awards are much much shorter you know they're very contained yes. um and a nice variety of 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 a range of, of awards there yeah Katrina's just saying a um, little bit tight on time maybe for to get the application form submitted or she's concerned about that difficult to get everything in order but best of luck to everybody this year and thank you very much John you know so that okay. was nice um, okay thank you recognizing the challenge but yeah and it is a challenge and but it, it's a challenge every year for groups um and and it's it's even more so this year but we we have been encouraging groups to be to be using these weeks as we lead up towards it maybe to be thinking about uh projects they will include in their entry form maybe sorting through their photographs you know so it's yeah you know and again we'll work with groups if groups have any problems you know through you know saving photographs converting files or whatever you know we're there to help and if we can at all we will so don't don't be afraid to to email us or call us John, I wish I could say we're flying through the questions, but every time I look, there's more. Um, okay, we would normally list our projects in category in numbers, our project numbers in category sequence. Should we now change this to listing projects as per? A no, you you can do them. You can do them by um, category if you wish, but it's just not so that when you've done we'll say your community planning and involvement, which is the first category, and maybe you have two projects there. So project one and project two that when you go on to the next category that you continue at project number three so we don't want groups that we you know for groups to put down that they've under the first category they've they've project one two and three and then under the second category they've project one and two because when you put those numbers back onto the map you're going to end up with two number ones and two number twos and so on yeah. so follow the sequence through so in total if you have done 17 or 10 projects in in the year or two years in this case you should have project number one to ten on your entry form and one to ten on your map and then in the entry form you just simply put the little prefix beside them whether they're a new project a maintenance project or a future project the only reason i was saying is is working on the map first is that it, especially in a larger area that when your adjudicator is in that area looking at the map they you know that they, they can just work nicely through all of the projects um, but whatever works for groups the adjudicator will work around it so you can do the numbering one to ten on your map first or you can do the numbering on your application form but just make sure that they they tie in with each other and um, what would you advise a group entering for the first time 
I would say just get an entry in, John. Yeah, what? and and the beauty of it is is that we we've, we've noted in the unit since before Christmas we've had a huge number of calls from from groups who haven't entered before, and again going back to a point I made earlier where. I think there's been a great awareness of the work that Tidy Towns groups do. And I think there's been a huge focus on nature and our environment over the last 12 months. I think we've all had time to stand maybe. And again, that awareness of what's in our area and what we could do in our area. So for any group that's considering entering, I think in the first instance, they should probably give us a call. We have a pack of information that we kind of share with groups. But it, it's very much the information we've shared here tonight. First of all, do your audit of your place, create your plan, do a map. And for your first entry, it's going to be difficult for you to kind of get a feel for what it's all about. But that's the beauty of it. Your adjudication report after your first entry will really set you on a good trajectory. They'll give you advice on where you should look. If you've done something that maybe wasn't totally correct, it's not that they're out to, to punish you, but they will gently steer you in the right direction and help you, you know, to to correct things and, and maybe give you ideas for projects. Again, that's why I was saying when you're doing your three or five year plan, look back to your old adjudication reports. There might be some ideas there. Actually, John, uh, somebody's you've kind of answered it there. I think um, have groups dropped off a general question and taking a break due to COVID, but not really by the sounds of things. Not by the sounds of it. And, and again, that's that's something we are very conscious of. But year on year in the last number of years, I mean, the competition has grown. There was a huge increase in 2019 for entries. Um, you know, we started in 1958 with 52 entries. In 2019, we had an unprecedented number of 924. We would love to top that number this year. You know, who knows? Yes. Um, but, but again, we just want to encourage groups that, you know, to, to stick with it. It's not, you. we know it has been a difficult year, but that they shouldn't feel in any way, you know, that if they haven't done all of the work they were hoping to do, I mean, none of us have achieved, you know, there's a lot of things we would all have maybe planned on doing in the last 12 months in, in our personal lives or whatever the case may be that, you know, we've had to, to rethink things. So, yeah. Um, is, is there a possibility that the competition mightn't happen this year? Well, you know, again, we're we're very much tied by public health advice, but even only yesterday, I don't know if many of the of the viewers have, have seen the video that Minister Humphreys put up uh, announcing the extension to that uh, funding deadline. It's, it's available on social media and, and on the Tidy Towns Facebook page. I think it was shared last night as well. Again, giving her commitment that the competition will launch. Um, now, you know, insofar as that that's the commitment we can give together with our sponsors, we're we're very committed to the competition going ahead this year. It it will of course be subject to public health advice. Going back to our point that safety of the volunteers and our adjudicators is paramount, and and that that is what will direct the launch. But once it is safe to do so. It is the departments and the sponsors and the minister's commitment that the competition will launch for 2021. There's a concern about groups that might not be so computer literate, John. And again, we're, we're here to help where we can. If, if groups, you know, if, if there is a real underlying problem there, but again, it's, it's perhaps an opportunity for maybe some younger members in the community to help. Maybe your TY students. I know a lot of schools have done uh, TY projects where they bring people, elderly people in the community in and help them set them up with email accounts and Skype accounts. And, you know, we've we've been overwhelmed, to be honest, by the amount of progress some groups have made. We're aware of some groups are now doing their weekly tidy towns meetings through Zoom. You know, all of these different communication methods that we maybe weren't aware of before. I know myself, I wasn't aware of any of them. Um, you know, up to a few months ago, Zoom for me was something on your camera lens, but now it's it's the way we're doing a lot of our meetings and stuff. So, you know, if groups have, have issues, again, we will help in any way we can. Please, you know, drop us an email, give us a call, um, and we'll do what we can to help you. John, you might just confirm, I'm just typing it in, you've confirmed there is no negative marking this year. No. Perfect. There will be no negative consequence. So for a group who, 
And again, we don't want to be in any way telling groups not to enter. We want to hear from every single group and more along with us, that, you know, than all these people that have been inquiring about entering for the first time or groups coming back that have maybe taken a break for a number of years. But th there won't be, I can't see any situation where an adjudicator will be sending out a negative message to any group because for a group to, to be that committed that they're still enthusiastic about their place, enthusiastic about their group and, and maintaining that presence in a town or a village, the Tidy Towns group. Are, and it's not just about the physicality of the work they do. We hear from so many individuals who are parts of Tidy Towns groups that it's the social element of it. Yeah. And again, I know people can't meet up at the moment, but maybe it's that phone call. Maybe it's that connection with the, the Zoom call or, or the, the WhatsApp group. And that, that to some people is a lifeline through this few Actually, difficult months. A lovely comment has just popped up on the chat saying the winner of the Tidy Towns competition is the whole of Ireland. <laughs> Well, it is. And, and I mean, it's it's everybody. It's not the groups. It, it, it's it's everybody. It's the groups. It's the minister. It's the department. It's our sponsor, Super Value. But it's all of the people who, who live in these towns and villages. I mean, absolutely. You know um, this. And again, the comments we've heard about, about over the last 12 months, people are very focused on what's in their own area. And I think they now see the work that Tidy Towns groups have done. And hopefully that will, will increase participation in the volunteer work for groups. Yeah. You mentioned that the map should have a logical route. Is this as relevant if judging is being handled remotely? It's not, but again, it's it's no harm it that if you're doing a map, it, it's no harm to start, you know, as you mean to go on. We will be back to business as usual next year. There'll be feet on streets. The adjudicators will be arriving at an hour or a day. You do not know. So it, it's good if you're doing a new map, you know, by all means. Uh, but again, these are just ideas. And again, going back to the color coded and, and planning a route, you don't have to plan a route for your adjudicator. They, you know, if the map is presented to them and, and everything is aligned with your entry form, they will more than be adequately, you know, positioned to find things themselves. But it's just to, Whatever works for the groups, you know, once it's delivered to the adjudicator in, you know, once it's aligned with your, ele with your legend and everything, it'll be, it'll be easy to follow. Um, now, is there a list of experts in each county that can direct groups three ways of enhancing our area for groups that are not that creative? You're all very creative, really. It you are very creative. Yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of the adjudicators, you know, in their own right, maybe sometimes will help groups with Tidy Towns plans. But, but again, you don't have to go for professional advice, but that advice is there. And if if a group are looking for support and again, one of the elements of the 2020 fund there, the one million euro that the minister announced at Christmas, one of the areas in that was if groups want to get consultancy support. And I know consultancy makes it sound very high level, but if they just want to get somebody, an expert to come in and help them on some of the categories or on the sustainable development goals, you know, maybe, maybe your local authority might be able to yeah, put you in, in connection with somebody or, or likewise, we can, we have, we have all of the adjudicators details and we can share a group's details with the relevant adjudicators who are expert in that field and if they have capacity to engage with them they, they can yeah. do that then themselves and i think your local authority um i'm not sure where you're based if it's limerick you can come to me and ask some questions but also your the development companies in your area certainly the limerick development companies both valley <coughs> howra um rhiannon there and also uh west limerick resources elaine they both work with tidy towns groups and are font of information themselves with themselves and they also would have good contacts as well if there was something specific you were into so yeah, that, that's what, a whole tier of help available to one you. other point as well is that while this is a competition there's a very friendly rivalry between local tidy towns groups so don't be in any way afraid to contact your local groups they may have mm -hmm. they may have sourced support or assistance in some of the category areas in previous years and, and would be happy i'm sure That's to true. share that information with you um Yes, this is more statement. They're just, you know, outlining that it's going to be a bit strange doing the remote application as opposed to the having an adjudicator come and, and visit. Um, and it really is how you put your projects forward, isn't it, John? 
It is. Yeah, it is. It is going to be different. There's no there's no yeah. saying it won't. We totally appreciate that. But I think while it's different, it is achievable. Um, if, if, if we all work together with the commitment that I think is there from from everybody involved, the alternative, if, if we if we are to wait for a time when we can get back out and everybody working and, and get adjudicators out to each of the towns or villages, it, that yeah. may not be achievable this year. So I think yeah. the the commitment and, and the aspiration is that a competition, albeit different to what we're normally used of, is better than, than no competition at all. Yeah, I think absolutely. so many of us, and, and we've heard from so many groups who really missed the competition last year. Yeah. Um, you know, so. John, this is one, um, and we would be asked this from time to time, I have to say, in a small village, have a derelict building literally falling down, it's been cordoned off, would we be crazy to enter this year? And the answer is you would not. I no, you would not. And I mean, you you are, as a Tidy Towns group, you are not responsible for everything in your town or village. You know, and again, we're going back to that word awareness. If you, you know, don't ignore the, the elephant in the room. So if you have a derelict building or you have a site that is is in need of repair and, and, and work, don't ignore it. Reference it in your application form. But at the same time, reference what kind of work you have maybe done to or tried to do to address it so if it's a derelict building maybe you've tried to identify the owner of it we're aware of groups who have contacted owners of derelict buildings and with their permission they have painted them they have put ornaments in the windows they've mowed the grass but again all of this should be done with the permission of the owner so again that's why Going back to your three year or five year plan, that piece of work about engaging and consulting with property and, and business owners in your town or village. And it's not always going to be easy to find an owner of that business. Maybe maybe the owners have deceased and maybe ownership of it has transferred to somebody who doesn't live in the area anymore. Um, but again, to have that awareness and that you have tried engagement with your local authority or with local residents in the area to identify an owner but to no avail. And, and that's all you can do. And no adjudicator is going to in any way, they will actually commend you for trying to, to deal with this, but don't be put off by entering. Yeah, and also it's Tidy Towns is a progression and it's baby steps throughout the years. Of course it so is. No, no do... group is going to have, and you won't. You may have, even in a good year, normal year, you may not have projects in all of the categories because you know for small areas, with a small team of volunteers, you know, if you're maintaining the projects you've done in recent years, it's going to be difficult to keep coming up with new projects. And we're aware of that. And that's why marks are awarded for maintenance projects and for, you know, planning ahead and looking ahead and doing your three year plan and listing your future projects. Again, it's going back to that awareness of how your place can be improved through the competition and how you're aware of what the different categories are and how they apply to your area. Um, we're currently obtaining a five-year plan, but it will only be at the consultation stage when the competition entry is available. Should we still enter the competition and would yes, we qualify yes, under the one yeah. million funding? Definitely enter the competition. I mean, you know, you, you can make your adjudicator aware of that. Maybe you have, if you have a previous plan that has expired, you can still reference that. You may be still finishing off some of the projects that were in that plan. Maybe you can give a brief synopsis of some of the key components of your new plan, although it's only in consultation stage. It's still a body of work. It still shows that that level of awareness is there and that you are being proactive and identifying projects for the next few years. Um, John, you might just give out the years for the funding that you're eligible for the funding yes well you, you would have for the 2020 top-up fund you would have had to have entered the competition in 17 18 or 19 but all eligible groups have been contacted at this stage they were contacted in early january so if, if you have entered the competition in one of those years and you haven't received an application form from Pubble, please get in touch with the unit tomorrow and we'll follow up on that for you very good um can you repeat the green schools on Tashka Green Schools program? Just Google that, and they have they're they're a great resource actually for schools, but they're obviously a good resource for tidy towns. They're full of um, 
They are, yes. And, and if your school has ha, are involved in the green flag, and I think there's a blue flag, there's a lot of different initiatives that schools are involved with. And, and Leave No Trace is another body that do a lot of work with schools. If, if your schools are involved in any of those initiatives, the Tidy Towns Group can tie in with those. Um, once there's a, a bit of a link made there with the local school, you know, some of those projects. And there is a schools award every year as well as part of the competition that national schools or secondary schools can enter. And I think, you know, seeing uh, the children at the award ceremonies collecting their awards, it, it really sows that seed that, you know, that there's a lot of interest there. And that that um, involvement in Tidy Towns is being brought home then to their parents and to their siblings and, and perhaps grandparents. And, and it has a positive effect throughout the community that maybe increased participation in the in the group. Okay, this is there's three asking the same question and you have covered it. Just your the this year's application form you can submit projects from June two thousand and nineteen right up to the up to whenever yeah whenever the the competition closing date is basically yeah. or when the adjudication starts so, so it'll if go we, all the way into 21 so it's yeah, almost like two years it'll be, it'll be two years yeah and really you know for groups you know up to the point where the pandemic uh, arrived there was probably eight or nine months of work that may have been done um, and it's just for groups to be kind of aware of that and that's something maybe that we might have learned from all of this is going forward that as you're working on a group or as, as your group is working on a project, it's always a good idea to be recording that. You know, don't wait until the application comes out next March or next April. Start recording it somewhere now. Take your pictures, take your um, statistics of whatever benefits have been derived from it. If you've been doing your litter picks, how many bags were collected, if you've been segregating your litter, you know, all these kind of things. You can always, you're nearly, your application form should nearly start being completed the minute you've last year's application submitted, you know, and, and it takes the pressure out of it then trying to, to think of everything that you, you have completed over the last 12 months. So it's good to be working towards it all the time. Now, John, uh, we're nearly at half nine. We're at 38 open questions, but some of them are repeats. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm okay if you're okay, I'm whatever, okay. Yeah, I'm whatever okay. works, yeah. I just want to say there's 270 participants still with us. So just okay. anybody who has to leave, we completely understand. I've said it several times and it's in the chat, but we will be sending all attendees. All of you will get a link to the presentation, both on YouTube and we will be sending a PDF. OK, so you will get that just so you're aware. Um. Somebody's concerned about the flowers won't be in bloom when when they're submitting the application form if they're not uh, if they're not visiting if the again that's you know if, if you're a pre, if you're a group that have been entering the competition previously there will be you know there'll be an awareness there from the adjudication team of work that that group have been doing in the past yeah. you know if you've always been an area that have had very impressive floral displays, be they planters, hanging baskets, window boxes, you know, mm. we're sure that will be the case again. If And it may be the case that by the time the adjudication period starts or when the competition launches, mm. there may be buds blooming and you may be in a position to take photographs and send them. If you have photographs from 2019, you know, by all means, you know, that they could be submitted as well, that this is what you have been doing in the past. Um, John, you'd be happy to use a facility such as we transfer, wouldn't you? No, we no. can't, I'm afraid. No. Okay. Um, or, or Google Share or Dropbox or okay. anything like that. It has to be in an email format to okay. the email address. Well, I nearly yeah. sent everybody wrong there. That's yeah, no, sorry. Our IT, no, our, our security, our IT security, yeah. you know, limits access to, to facilities like that. Um, so it's just through the online application to to tidytowns at drcd.gov.ie. Okay, 20 megabytes includes the photos, doesn't it? It does, yes. Yeah. But if the photos, like if, if and in the, in the past, some groups have sent photos individually as an attachment and, and they're quite sizable in that way. 
But if the photograph is copied into a Word document, just as, a, you know, a piece of text as such, it comes in as a photograph. It's no longer a JPEG or, or whatever format the photograph might have been taken in. It's just an image on a Word document. It, it greatly reduces the size of it. And, and by making it smaller on the page as well, it reduces not only the physical size, but the, the space associated with it. So you can fit, you know, you know as I said, up to eight photographs. And once, once there's an awareness there or a visual there of what the project is about, it doesn't have to be a huge photograph. The adjudicator will still be able to appreciate it. Okay. Um, two about, is the route for the adjudicator really that important this year? That's no, no, it's not. No, that's just an idea been put out there. It's, you know, some groups do it, some don't. It's just, these are all just ideas that groups can think about. If you, okay. if you normally do the numbering in your entry form first, that's fine, just as long as it refers back to the map, or you can do it vice versa. Just so long as they align, that's the main thing. Would air codes help in the 2021 competition? Well, yeah, an air code for, now we do ask on the entry form, you know, if, if it's not a defined um, town or, or village, you know, wh where is the location of your, your centre? Um, so air codes would work, but again, for this year when we won't be physically calling out, um, but if groups want to put it in, it, it's good to start using this, in a more, you know, it's a, it's a practice that we can start applying and it will be there going forward. It's no harm to, to include an air code and definitely an air code for your contact details is a good idea. Um, do new projects include projects done for last year's competition? I think the answer to that is yes. If you yes, have because a project, for, the, yeah. for the 2020 competition, you would have been working towards that from 2019, June 2019. And, and sadly, the competition didn't take place. So those projects are still live as such and can be included will the tidy towns awards be virtual do you think yeah it's hard to know you know it, it, it's it's difficult to see an event like what has taken place in recent years in the helix you know it would be difficult you know but who knows you know there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel numbers are reducing the the vaccine rollout is increasing so we don't know where we'll be later on in, in the year but um Awards will continue as normal. It may be a case that they are virtual, but all awards that fall due from the competition, all medals, all certificates, all cash prizes, will all issue to groups. You know, if we have to post certificates and medals out to groups, we will do that. Cash prizes will issue as normal to the group's bank accounts. So, okay. Um, very good. That will go ahead. Just a lovely comment. Thank you so much for this webinar. Clarified so much. Great that the competition is going ahead in any format. I will definitely, it will definitely invigorate us groups again. So Brilliant. Nice. And yeah, and the feedback we've been getting in the unit, you know, that when we, when we tell groups that it is a firm commitment from all involved that the competition will go ahead, albeit different. I think there's a, there's a huge level of satisfaction with that you know it's not going to suit everybody there will be some groups who will feel aggrieved perhaps that you know things are different but yeah i think it's better than than the competition not proceeding can we submit more than what map our area dunleary has many buildings of interest it's quite large and projects are spread apart geographically okay again you can but the going back to years where adjudication would take place on the ground you know sometimes you'd see a map where you have the center of the map in in the center of an a3 page we'll say and then you might have smaller pieces coming out as spurs so if you have projects that are in kind of you know geographically spread out from your center of your village or your town it might be just an idea to zoom out and put a smaller little map in the corner of one page you know you may not have to itemize a large section of your town with no project you know if you have a project in the center of town and then one out at maybe at a roundabout or an industrial estate or wherever it is okay. you may not have to show all of the geographical space in between um it's just you know in order for it to be of, of a, a valuable size for the adjudicator to follow it it might be no harm to just do little zoom zoom in sections enlarged rather than the whole area Lovely. The, a link to the sustainability goals has been given. I'll send that out 
in the email to all attendees as well. Uh, yeah, and the Department of Environment and um, Department of Environment, Climate and Communications, I think. Yeah, their name has changed. Um, they have. Uh, we can share that information on our website or through social media. Um, yeah, and it, it's probably been shared in the newsletter over the last number of months. They have a dedicated team working on the sustainable development goals who are putting information out there the whole time. Um, there's also the climate action re climate action regional offices um, around the country um, that that have information there. Um, are we likely to have the same adjudicator as in 2019? We're still looking at that. You know, we we will be meeting with the adjudicators in the coming uh, week. Next week, in fact, we have our workshop with all of our adjudicators. So, again, it depends on 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 the number of adjudicators available to us and how it's how it's spread out. But we normally send different adjudicators back to centres. But um, we'll review all of that when we meet with the adjudicators. Um. See now, while it's totally understandable that it's a different competition this year, people can only do their best. A concern that momentum will be lost, um, that we can't carry out all the works we would normally do, so the results will be wildly different. Have any thoughts gone into having a standalone year whose results do not, whose results do not carry over or are not looking at previous results? Yeah, and again, that's something, you know, we are totally aware of that groups may not have, but, but no group is alone in that sense. Every group in the country is in that is in that area. It's not as if the, and I know there were some limited lockdowns in some areas for small periods, but by and large, the restrictions have been at a national level throughout the, you know, the last 12 months. So groups, um, I think everybody is in the same boat um, and the adjudicators, you know, will be very aware of that. And we will be discussing all of this with them when we meet next week. You know, they're a very, you know, they're very understanding to, and I think anybody who has been in the competition over the last number of years, the, the tone of the adjudication reports is always complimentary, but, you know, uh, in an advisory role where needed, but definitely complimentary and appreciative of the work that, that the groups do. We are very conscious that these are all volunteers. Um, they're giving of their time and their skills, you know, freely yes. to make their places better places. So yeah. groups shouldn't be, you know, again, if you haven't delivered some of the projects that maybe, I think groups are maybe been harder on themselves than anybody else. You know, it's that sense of commitment to their place to make their places better. Um, and maybe just to, don't be so hard on yourselves. You know, we, we are aware of where you're coming from and, and you know, we'll meet you halfway on it. There's no, there's no worries about that. And I suppose just, you know, it's just a question of trying to put your best foot forward again. Exactly. You're under exactly. the current circumstance. Yeah. And as you said, every, we're all in the same boat. Yeah. And it, and it may take a number of years for some groups to feel that, but again, you know, just because something is in your three-year plan, you know, there were groups who submitted a three-year plan probably to us in 2019 with great aspirations of what they were going to have achieved by 2021 or 2022. Just because that was in a three-year plan doesn't mean we're going to hold that over you. You revise your three-year plan every year. Things change. You may have applied for funding to develop a project. Maybe that project can't go ahead now for one reason or another, but that doesn't mean that there's any negative consequence for you as the group. Um, you know, we appreciate the ambitions you have, but we also are aware of the, the limitations that are in, you know, presented to you and more so over the last 12 months. John, you might just save me typing it again. <laughs> you might just say the special awards are definitely happening. Yes, they're all happening. And as I said, some new exciting ones as well that I think will add a nice flavor to the competition. So yes. um, if you definitely don't have ones a local, to watch local, out for. Apologies. If no, you no, sorry. A local super value in your area, do you think it's okay to approach any super value? Of course. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. I mean, we, you know, while they have a large network of stores, definitely there are some parts of the country who don't have one in their next you know, in their town or maybe the next town, yeah. but but there's absolutely no problem in you approaching 
Um, and if, if you have any difficulty in that regard, as I said, please contact the group and we will make we will make contact with our contacts in head office and we will see if we can resolve that for you. OK, um, somebody is just suggesting thinking of think about to the other groups, think about registering as a Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, Sustainable Energy Community, SEAI Energy Community, and I will send that link as well. Thank you for that, um, Connor. I'll send that link as well out to everybody. Um, with yes, and any, any commitments or any involvement in groups like that that have been involved, they're definitely key areas that you should be referencing in your application form, uh, not alone in relation to the sustainable development goals, but in the relevant categories, the sustainability doing more with less, yes. you know, streetscapes, if it's a thing that you're doing, energy lighting, you know, LED lighting, things like that, you know, it's, yeah. there's a lot of that happening across the country through various initiatives. So I don't know if you want to get into the detail of this, but how, how, how will adjudicators judge litter remotely? Yeah, look, again, you know, it might be difficult for new groups, yeah. but for groups that have been in the competition for some time, you know, and, and we're all very aware that in the past number of months, litter has become a problem. And we've yeah. heard it from individuals and from groups yeah. that, you know, they now appreciate the work that tidy towns and local Absolutely. authorities have been doing in that general area. Absolutely. But when those individuals and and also the people on, on the employment schemes or TUS or RSS schemes, when those individuals were stood down throughout the periods of lockdown, um, you know, and it, Really, the litter, you know, it's a behavioural thing. I mean, really, in an ideal world, litter shouldn't be a problem for tidy towns groups or for local authorities. You know, facilities are there. There's a wide range of facilities for, I think it's about a behavioural change to encourage recycling and responsible use by the by the, the individual to deal with their waste. Um, and we're aware that over the last number of months, the gloves and the masks and the PPE equipment, you know, it's become a problem. Yeah. But um, but I think a group should explain what they're doing, be it definitely, the awareness definitely. they do yes. and the litter picks that they do. And if they have been doing litter picks, again, if they're on social media, maybe they have messages up there that, you know, yeah. they do a litter pick, you know, on, a, on, on every Saturday. But at the moment, with the current restrictions, that if people want to collect you know, a bag or bring a bag as they're going on their 2K or 5K yes. walk and that they can leave it at a designated collection point. You know, there are a lot of ways that groups can work around that. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, showing an awareness that yeah. they are dealing with litter if it is a problem in their area. Yeah, and restrictions are paramount, though. We're not suggesting anybody go again. Oh, no, de no restrictions. And again, as we say continuously to every group that ring and to every group that engage with us and throughout the newsletter, you know, we we advise in the strongest way possible and encourage all groups to adhere to the public health advice and to the social distancing. That if there are any litter picks or anything, any project work, planting or, or pruning or whatever the case may be, that it's done in a, in a socially distant and safe manner. That, you know, the health and safety of the volunteers is yes. key priority. Somebody's suggesting, I think some photos could be included in the application before picking and after picking. Which is yeah, it, yeah. They could, yeah. Again, it's yeah, it's, it's, a good idea. it's yeah. How involved does a group have to be in a project? If another group in the town has done a project that fits the goals or the application form, can they include it in the application form? I can, yeah. But again, it's nice to to show an engagement with that group. that group. So if they're registered as one of the groups that you were engaging with, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be there through through you know, every minute of the project they're doing. And again, that that ties in with the schools. We know through the whole area of child protection and all of the, the, the rules and regulations that if, you're, if your local school has a, you know, a green flag or they have, you know, they're, they're doing some nature biodiversity initiatives or whatever the case may be, perhaps somebody from the Tidy Towns group might come in and have a talk with them in class. Maybe some of the parents or grandparents in your group might bring the children along um, to be involved in some of the initiatives and through that engagement you can then reference project work that they have been doing as as ticking some of the sustainable development goals or in achieving some of the category targets for your own entry a couple of lovely thank yous they're very 
delighted with your presentation, John. Somebody Thank asked you very me, much. The slides will be emailed to everybody. Um, will the volunteer award be presented this year? Volunteer award. Now, there's an Endeavour award. Well, there's the Super Value Heroes Award. That's yes, it. I did, yes, award. that. Yeah, I, I, I have no doubt that it won't. We, we will be engaging with Super Value on that. I'm sure they will be committed to that going ahead. Um, we can check with that. But all of the other special awards are going ahead. And I'm sure the Super Value, the Community Heroes Award will, will do likewise. So again, for groups to be, you know. I assume there won't be a second adjudication. <laughs> there, there will be. Yeah. Okay. But that may also be done remotely. Now, in an ideal world, we'd love to think that, you know, if restrictions had allowed that, that groups who are to get a second adjudication, that that may happen on the street. But we don't think it will. Um, so we're, we're just sticking to the remote at, at the moment, but a second adjudication will happen. So the, on a normal year, about, I think in 2019, about 50 or 60 or so groups received a second adjudication. And the way that that is identified as groups where an adjudicator in their initial um, assessment of all of the areas they're visiting, you know, those that yeah. seem to be scoring particularly high across each of the counties there would be a couple selected from each county or thereabouts and they you know anybody who would be a contender for any of the the main awards uh, in order for transparency and for a, a second set of eyes looking at things that uh, center would receive another visit from another adjudicator and i'm i'm expecting that it will be the same this year so when the adjudication commences and it's been done remotely the adjudicators will, as before, share with us the information that they have on the high scorers, and we may then reassign those high scoring centres to a different adjudicator who will give their interpretation of what the application form uh, warrants as regards marks. Does the entry form have to be completed on a once-off basis? Sometimes online you you may have to leave submitting your application form, save it and come back and complete it. Thank you. No, the this. way the way that that would maybe work, you know, and again, a lot of online application processes, they will allow you part complete and, and save and come back. But for our entry form this year, it will be I I'm expecting at the moment there will be two versions of the form put up on online and shared with groups. One will be a PDF where they can get all of the information and the other will be an editable Word format. So they can save that Word format onto their computer and they can, they can work away on that over the weeks. Um, and they can be preparing information already like text. They can be putting text together so that when the form becomes available to them, they can just copy and paste that information in. But to to remember to keep saving the document as they're going through it. I know it's a, it's a disheartening occurrence when you've been working on a document and realize maybe you haven't hit save. So just to remember that as you're working through it and saving your information as you go along, you can pick up where you left off. Um, should floral displays such as hanging baskets, window boxes and planters be included in streetscape and public spaces or green spaces and landscaping? It, it can be in both and, and it depends, you know, some 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 entrants don't have a huge amount of streetscape. If you think of our smaller villages, perhaps um, where there might be just, you know, small settlements in the village centre, but there may be a green space, there may be landscaping work done. So wherever it's relevant, you know, it, it can be referenced. You know, it's no harm to reference it in both. You'll probably only get marks for the individual project in whichever category, but to show an awareness again that it refers to both categories. You know, so if, if it's a landscaping really and green spaces, I'd say we're more looking at the whole maintenance of those areas. If it's, it's if there's a floral display in those or, or, or raised beds or things like that in a landscaping park or a green space, that's where they should be. But if it's if it's planters or hanging baskets along your streetscape or in your shops or houses, that's the category it should be referenced in. Yeah, just remember all the pollinators folks. Rather yes, than definitely. Just, yeah. yeah, and in fairness, the, the Tidy Towns groups have been instrumental yes. with the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan. Yes. You know, that's something we reference in the newsletter on a regular basis. Um, somebody's concerned that, that the, 
it's considered the tidy towns group is responsible for everything in the village no they're not and as i said earlier you're not responsible for everything and you can't be expected to deal with everything again going back to that a word it's your awareness of what's going on in your town or village and once you can demonstrate that to the adjudicator and yes if you've been able to progress some of those issues tell your adjudicator about it but if you haven't Again, tell your adjudicator why not. You know, maybe you've attempted to identify um, a landowner or a property owner to ask them to to work with you. Maybe you've identified them and they don't want to work with you. That's their prerogative. We don't in any way impact on on property rights or anything like that. Again, some you know areas of signage. You know, it's about getting all of the community to work with you and and we do know that that isn't always possible but again that you have tried and taken every effort you possibly can to get groups to work with you that's all you can do is the 20 megabytes absolute or can you go over it a bit <laughs> sorry is the 20 megabytes absolute or can you go over it, it? is a, it is absolute yeah, you absolute. see the thing is that the, the the servers will probably block it so that's why if you think you're going near the 20 megabytes, maybe have a look at the compressed zip folder. But if you do have issues when it comes to you submitting your application, please don't feel that, you know, just because you can't get it over the line that, that that's it, game over. It's not. Uh, talk to us in the unit and we'll help you. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure we get that application in from you. Sarah wants to say thank you for a brilliant presentation. So thank you, John. Thank you very um, much. Eileen wants to say thank you very much for something that's very comforting and reassuring and consoling Good. <laughs> in terms of tidy towns, which is nice. Uh, another thank you. Is there a maximum word count for each of the, is there a maximum word count in each of the sections of the entry form? We have a lot no, to cover over. No, today. there isn't. And again, it, it's really down to the level of work that you have put into a project. You know, if, if you have and again, it, it, everybody writes things differently. Some people will get their message across in three or four lines. Other, it may take them a bit more. That's fine. We totally understand that. But once you get your, once you convey to your adjudicator the various elements of the project you've done or projects, if you have a number of projects under each individual category, um, there's no problem. There isn't a, a limit like some forms when you come to the end of the box, it stops and it won't take your text anymore. You can just keep typing um, and and the, the form will work with you. Um, it's a basic it's a basic enough word document. So the more you keep typing, it will work with you and you can incorporate your photos or your links to social media, to websites. And, and don't feel you have to send reports into us. That's where groups sometimes can encounter difficulties with file sizes. If you've been involved in in a report like that group that that referenced the question earlier about the census or the uh, you know the the analysis they carried out in their area if they have a nice glossy report of that rather than submitting the report maybe it was submitted to the local authority maybe it's online somewhere you know to share the link to the document rather than the document itself yeah um john just on that for your population category should you be using the census or could you use the yes species? the last census is and and the, the you know 2016 is the last one we have at the moment so whatever your your census for your area was and and it's divided up into eight categories a and b or the village and yeah. c and d or the small town and so on yeah. um if if, and sometimes it is the case where a group can, if they're borderline from a village and population increases, they may all of a sudden, for the next time the competition comes around, they may have jumped into the small town yeah. or vice versa, they can go back. So, you know, it, it is the case that over time, some centres will move from one category to another. But uh, just to base it on your application from, from your census 2021, and you'll find that information on cso.ie. Now, Antashka have advised that we don't pick PPE. I suppose that's masks and the gloves. What are your views on this? But we always say in Limerick. Yeah, well, I mean, for all litter, I mean, all litter, litter really should be treated as, I use the word hazardous lightly, but, you know, at the same time, it, it is litter and really people should at all times use the litter pickers. They should use gloves. You know, they need to, again, people, you know, volunteers need to apply uh, 
con- to be conscious for their own health and safety. And if they feel in any way that there's a risk posed to them by dealing with any project, they shouldn't, you know. And and to if there is a, a, a huge issue with with litter or or fly tipping or anything like that, you know, there are facilities there through your local authority or whatever to to share that information and and again don't feel that you're ultimately responsible for dealing with that because you're not yeah your action might be to call the local authority to call the guard the do you know to bring it to the attention yeah exactly yeah and And i know it is it is um you know sometimes people might think oh look I'll, i'll you know i need to do it now or whatever but you know at the same time to apply that you know to be conscious of your own health and well-being and and those working with you and again maybe through an awareness campaign it's no harm to maybe again if you have the presence on social media through your facebook or your twitter account maybe to encourage people because you know and again sometimes a mask can fall out of your pocket or a glove fall out It, it might be unintentional but at the same time we want to try and encourage people it's a behavioral change that we encourage people to be responsible with their ppe and that they bring it home and dispose of it in a safe manner themselves to be as positive as possible in what in what you're doing um and just what john said there if you consider it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing on the volunteer team with you if you consider something is too dangerous for you, then it is. Oh, well, definitely, it. definitely. And the and same that, that applies the to kind of basic rule for volunteers. Yes. Really. Yeah. And the same applies to to the actual actually being out and about at That's the moment. Right. You know, we hear from some groups that some groups are out, some groups aren't. You know, it, it's not a one size fits all. It's whatever you feel your group are capable of doing or feel safe doing, you know, there's no pressure on groups at all to be involved, um, you know, at the moment to be doing project work. We totally understand that. And and again, groups, you know, committee members or whatever, there shouldn't be any pressure put on volunteers. They should be very supportive of the volunteer hours that have been given for the last 60 plus years by thousands and thousands of volunteers under the Tidy Towns movement across the country that, you know, they give so freely of their time and their skills. So. They shouldn't be made feel in any way um you know if, if they have concerns themselves about being out at the moment or being out alone or being out at, you know in dark you know they their their concerns need to be respected and and you know keep keep your volunteers on board in in doing that way john i have to say we're nearing 10 o'clock and we there's still nearly 170 people here you've done so well thank you so much <laughs> No problem. No problem. Um, I, I think we had we had well over four hundred. I missed the top line, over five hundred registered. I mean, this was a well sought after seminar. Thank you so much for your time. No, and thank and thank you, Sinead, for giving us you know for giving the Tidy Towns Unit and the department the opportunity to, you know, we have been sharing information through social media and through our newsletter, but I think a method like this to engage with so many groups at one time um we really appreciate to yourself and to your team and to 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 all behind and i know that this is your fourth webinar we've seen some of the other ones and it, i think there's been a a wealth of information shared throughout the other seminars or webinars that yeah. that groups can only benefit from so so yeah. you're to be commended for that well thank done you. thank you well on that note folks it's nearly 10 o'clock so we'll see night thank you so much to all thanks very much everybody and and again you know we encourage all groups you know please don't feel that there's any negative consequence by submitting you know an entry form that you feel doesn't you know if you have a few blanks here or there you know tell us why tell us what you've been doing how the pandemic has affected your community or your volunteers you know we want to hear from you and and keep you engaged and fingers crossed when we come out the other side of all of this we'll have who knows we might be over a thousand entries in the competition (laughs) onwards and and upwards never know (laughs) that would be amazing it would it would all right Sinead and thanks everybody for joining in take care bye now bye bye